So, welcome to another stream. Um, I'm doing some more Rust open source contribution. So, let's have a look here. This is the project in question. This is Git UI, which is a terminal UI for Git, written in Rust, and it's blazing fast. Uh, and what I'm currently working on is a way to um, a more uh, or a more comprehensive commit message UI, which supports multi-line commit messages, which is a must-have for me to make to be able to make it a, a daily driver for me. So I'm probably going to use it in the beginning at least. In addition to another um, Git client, but um, I'm hoping to make this kind of my main tool for Git at first, and then hopefully do some PRs and get it up to a state where I'm able to use it as my uh, main tool for Git. Anyway, so a multi-line uh, Git messages, and the way I'm um, I'm solving this is by delegating the entering of the git commit message to a uh, an external editor in this much the same way that uh, git does so i've made the git ui look at different environment variables and launch the correct editor that the user has specified through the variables and launch that with a uh, with um with a preset file and when the user closes the editor, I'll read that file and use that as a commit message, whatever they've entered. Okay, so let's see here. I've already done some work on this in the two previous streams, and I came up against a problem uh, which I just recently managed to find a way to fix. So. I'm currently at a stage. Let's just launch this and see where we're at. Okay, uh, just give me a little bit of a second here. Just got a text from my from my wife. <laughs> there we go. Hopefully that's that's sufficient. Okay, so here we have the UI up and running. Um, you got some keyboard uh, shortcuts for moving around, of course. And if we just make a small change somewhere. Uh, yeah, sure. Let's just make it right here. Um, I don't know. Let's move this, for example. Save this. But you can see that we've got a change here. We can have a look at the change. We can stage it. We can start the commit message. This is the simple UI. And what I've been implementing is this feature, which will launch Vim, in my case. It might be some other, other editor. And you'll be able to enter a commit message right here. And then afterwards, you, you'll be able to save it and, uh, or rather write to the file or save the file and Git UI will automatically pick that up and use that as a commit message, much in the same way that Git does it. So this isn't revolutionary in any way. It's just, um, um, just a nice uh, feature. Well, here is the problem. As you can see, we're not back in Git UI. But actually, we are, because if I start navigating around, you can see that the UI starts showing up again. Uh, the problem is it doesn't re-render the whole screen when you return. So it uh, falls back to the, the main terminal, you could say, which is a problem. So this is the final, really, uh, final roadblock or main block that I have for this to get, the, to get this working. So I recently found a way to fix this, 
which I am pretty happy about because I had a stream. I did a stream a couple of days ago, and I was completely stumped. And then last night, I actually managed to um, to f uh, to, f to get a break. No, to have a have a break in the case. I don't know. I managed to make some progress at least. So inside of this draw function, which is the main draw function of the whole um, of the whole UI. Um, this draw function you, does uh, caching, so it will only update the parts of the screen that are actually being updated. So it won't redraw everything, just the things that change. And you can see that uh, the, these artifacts over here, um, which are the text that are present, you could say, underneath the application showing through, and this is also the case. Oh, uh, that's not what I wanted to do. Uh, this is also the case over here. Uh, so what we want is to clear the whole screen and make it redraw everything. And we can do that uh, specifically by going through terminal clear. Now that, this might, <laughs> might seem obvious and it kind of is. Uh, the problem is under the covers, this actually uses cross terms clear function. And I can't just go directly to cross term and call the clear function on that because I tried doing that and that, that didn't work. I apparently need to go through here to get the right buffer or something, uh, the right screen buffer. So uh, that's fine. Uh, the problem is though, um, this variable, this terminal, which is passed into this function, uh, it's a local, it's a no local variable uh, to the main loop of the of the UI. So I don't have access to that variable right here in any easy way. So I need some way to signal that it should do a clear of the whole screen. To make it work. So, uh, what I okay. So if I add this line right here, right, uh, we go back here. Uh, I should probably uh, let's just add that back, and then do terminal clear right here. Just save that. Jump over to get UI. We can unstage this. As you can see, this is. <laughs> All wonky. So let's just exit and run this anew. Yeah, I'm not handling the result here. Oh, I forgot to bump the, the sizes. Just a second here. 20 is pretty good. Uh, so let's see, let's just, um, here we go, and let's just point size, yes, there we go, so this should be plenty large to be able to see, right, okay, so you can see it, it cleared the screen, <laughs> so that did work, um, okay, now it's happening in the wrong order. I had this working yesterday, so I know that I can make it work. Where did my draw function go? All right, All right. Is it terminal, or did I use this at all? I think I might actually just have used Let's see. Okay, that doesn't work. Uh, what I mean to do is, what, or rather what I did do, I think, was use resize and then do terminal dot size on that and that's a result. So if we do this, we should probably be fine. I'll go back here and run this once again. There we go. Okay, so here we got it working. And if we now do this, as we see, I don't know if it's visible on the stream. Yeah, I think it is. You can see that it's kind of jittering or blinking, and that's because it's clearing the screen for every draw. <laughs> and then, uh, 
and then redrawing the whole UI, which is not what we want at all, but that's what we have at the moment. But if I now go back like so, it works as it should, which is what we want. So I did have a look at the implementation of this, this resize, and what it does in the end is set, is it called back in the clear. And <laughs> and the backend in this case is cross term. And the way this is implemented for cross term, if we have a look at the, um, let's see, docs RS, uh, this is called, um, oh, TUI. Uh, if we have a look at the implementation for cross term, oh no, it's not um, it's not available in the docs. We have to look at the source. So in the source and backend and cross term, we have a clear function here somewhere. Here we go. I could probably bump the size of this a bit. So for the clear function, it calls the execute function, which executes commands on some kind of buffer, in this case, a uh, local variable, and it calls clear all, which is clear the whole screen in this case. And I thought I would be able to call that directly, but it appears there is some kind of... So this this works, and I, I, sh I should say by uh, calling clear directly, at least in my head, should do the same uh, without having to go through all the buffers. Oh no! Right, because it did clear it called um, uh, reset on the buffer inside of the redraw implementation. So if we have a look over here again, uh, let's just do this. So if we look over here, it calls reset, and that seems to be significant. That's on this is on terminal RS and TUI. If we have a look where this is defined. Holds the result of the current and previous draw calls. The two are compared at the end of each draw pass to output the necessary updates to the terminal. Right. Okay, that makes sense. Index of the current buffer in the previous array. One minus the current. So it resets the previous buffer too. And after that, it clears it. So it's significant that the previous buffer is also reset. Is there any other way? Um, let's see. Oh, that's not what I meant to do at all. Uh, let's see. We have a look at the usages of this. Current buffer. Obtains the difference between previous and current buffer and passes it to the current backend for drawing. That's not what we want. This is the resize thing. Swap buffers, and we're back. So apparently there is no way of to easily 
reset, in fact. At least not the previous buffer. Current is a U-size. Yeah, so this is probably just, it, it's either zero or one. Okay, that makes sense. So if it's zero in this, and this uh, array, it's one in the previous, I think. Whatever, I don't need to understand this code. The important part is I have no way of calling on this buffer. Hmm. Because it can call clear, but that doesn't do what I want. This leads to a full clear of the screen, which is what I want. The annoying thing is this clear, however, does not really do what it's <laughs> What it advertises because it does a clear but none of the previous buffer two which means you won't get the proper clearing apparently or so it seems at least this works but this does not that is strange Cargo. Uh, you know what? I'm actually gonna just gonna set up my watch exec again. So watch exec, for those who don't know, is a uh, quite a nice tool. It's written in Rust, of course. <laughs> it watches, uh, in this case, it watches some, um, it watches files and runs a command when those files changes. So in this case, it's watching files with the extension of RS. It's watching the directory called source. And whenever it detects a change, it will restart the process that it launched last time. So the process it's supposed to launch is cargo R, which is uh, just a shortcut for cargo run on, um, in my terminal, uh, or shell rather. And I'm also passing dash L to the uh, to Git UI to make it log, uh, in case I wanna watch the log, uh, have a look at the logs. I'm just gonna get that up and running. And what that will do is Make sure I have this running. It will run whenever I save. It will rerun. Give me the latest. Okay, so it clears, but it doesn't redraw, which is kind of weird, considering that the clear <sighs> comes before the draw. What happens if I put it after the draw, I wonder? Oh, wait returns a result. Uh, sure, we can just do this and then do this. Yeah. It doesn't work either. And that, that makes sense. It makes sense that if I clear the screen, clear the terminal after drawing, it should be blank. It's just weird that it also happens if I do the clearing first. Also feels kind of hacky that I have to use resize to make this work. But it does work. That's the annoying part. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a way for me to call this or, or make rather make the main loop call this function. Um, and 
I'm gonna make make a way to make, make a call to this function to clear the screen. Um, and to do that, I need a way to kind of in, um, send a message to the main loop, which is uh, yeah, is right here actually. This this loop is actually the main loop. Uh, so what it does it uh, tries to get a event of some kind and then it handles that event and it redraws everything and uh, redraws and does the same thing again. Again, at the moment it can receive four kinds of events through four ki different channels. And I'm considering maybe Hmm, I'm considering maybe uh, maybe having another event which tells it to redraw or maybe like a systems level event that you, you're able to send kind of low level commands maybe. So for, for the input event, for example, this is when the user inputs stuff into the terminal and this will be fired. Git event is events from Git, logically enough. And the tick is just a, um, a event that's fired every five seconds, I think, to just refresh the UI. And this spinner update, I'm actually not really sure what this does because I've never seen the spinner, but I'm assuming it's a spinner that's somehow visible. Hmm. I could pass in like a boolean value. Like should clear. Right. And somehow set this up here somewhere. I don't know. That could be a possibility. And then down in here in the draw function, I could say like, yeah, if it if it should clear, do a clear. That's a possibility. But these events come through these channels, and that means I have to set up another channel just for the single purpose of doing this at the moment, which uh, it feels so unnecessary. But I mean, clearly this isn't so the solution either with uh, the tick having, uh, having this screen blink like this all the time. So here we go, now it works as chip. Hmm. I'm having a bit of a dilemma regarding this. Okay, so what I'm going to do first actually is inside of this poll file, this starts a background thread which will capture the input events from the user. And it will send those events through a uh, channel, which will then be used by the main loop to detect these inputs. The problem with the current solution here is that it will all, it, um, <laughs> as it's running in a background thread, it will continue to catch those inputs or these keystrokes from the user, even though GitUI is not in the in the uh, the active application, you might say. So when you launch into the editor inside of the terminal, it will uh, GitUI will still capture the keystrokes. So you sometimes have to type, it feels like you have to type twice because half the keystrokes are captured by GitUI, which is not what we want at all. So I solved that <laughs> and solved here being in air quotes <laughs> <laughs> because I had this to do to myself, do this properly. What it does at the moment is that it just increments this atomic U size. So whenever the atomic U size is, 
<laughs> is a modulo of two. So whenever it's an uh, an even number, it will try to to capture keystrokes. And if it's an odd number, it will not. <laughs> <laughs> and there's also an edge case where because of a uh, there's a, a timeout for how long it should be checking for keystrokes how long it should poll for keystrokes and at the moment that's two seconds uh, as defined by this duration and with if the user launches the editor say vim for example if the user launches Vim, when we're within those two seconds, so say for example, it starts polling and it will wait for two seconds to see if it receives any keystrokes. So you launch Vim and it starts listening for two seconds. And if you start typing instead of Vim within those two seconds, the keystrokes are, um, are captured by uh, by um, Git UI and not passed on to Vim. So Vim will never see them. So, and after those two seconds, it, it works fine. Uh, but there's an edge case there, you might say. And I am wondering, would we be able to tell this Okay, so here is there is a read function. Reads a single event. This function blocks until an event is available. Combine it with the poll function to get a non-blocking read. Uh, ba -ba -da -ba -da. It's guaranteed that read won't block because poll returned okay true. So actually, if I move this uh, down here, uh, like so, and remove one of these, so let's see, uh, uh, I'm gonna say this one. Okay, this is out of whack now. Yeah, because that doesn't return anything -y anymore. Uh, let's just have it return else uh, okay of none. Yeah. So I think that might actually fix the edge case. Because now it doesn't prevent the polling. It just prevents it from reading the event, I think. So we go into Vim now. Okay, that... Hmm. Okay, that seems to work. Okay. Hmm. Not really sure. This might actually do the trick, it seems. If we do, um, let's see. Oh, wow. Um, no idea what it, that actually. Sure. sure. 
Uh, let's see. Uh, if we launch it and we type one, two, three, four, five. Here. Oh, it sold to five. Crap, it didn't work as I hoped it would. Hmm. Let's try that again. Yeah, at 81. Man, I thought this would maybe solve it. Now it solved the one again. Hmm. Okay, let's add some, if I do, I don't know, uh, log info. And let's do reading event, like so. And then an info over here saying, um, didn't, oops, uh, didn't read event. Like so, and then we open uh, commit. And this is where we open a run the command. And what we do is right after this, which sets the atomic use size, we'll do another log saying launching editor. like so. Then we'll be able to have a look in the logs and see what happens. So if we do oh, not that, if we do this and we can do this. No need to make it that big. Uh, we can do an, in, in, uh, let's see, an interactive log for git and we'll have that one. And inside of this, we should have a log, right? And we can have a look at that. Small screen, but still it works. So, uh, if we now head back to this and launch the editor, we do some typing. Oh, started recording a macro by accident. There we go. Oh, yeah, there was a training factor. Uh, Q. We now have a look at the log. Okay, that's interesting. Did that just freeze on me? Oh, oh, there we go. It did. Oh, I haven't had this before. Come on, bat. Oh, oh, there we go. Uh, so let's see. Trace, 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 trace. We should be looking for some info in here. Here we go. That is a lot of events that I didn't read. Oh, that's why it took so long. It's a really huge file. Wow, that's a lot of polling. That's probably, uh, it's probably not a good thing. Okay, let's see. Reading event, launching editor, editor. it's not reading. So right here, it captures a key event. Shift C, launching the editor. It launches the editor and it does not read the event, which is good, which is what we want. Let's just have a look and see if it reads any events anytime soon. No, this looks very good. Okay. We had but we can see that it's our reading, reading events again right here. Right. 
How huge is this file? Uh, let's see. 13 megs. Holy crap. <laughs> 405,000 lines of uh, logs. Wow. That is huge. And it's still updating because it's still running. Holy crap. <clears throat> and that's the lesson, kids. Don't do too, do too much logging. Um, uh, not that one, but that one. There we go. Uh, let's see. Uh, right. Um, let's just stage this. Yeah, it still consumes the one letter. That's, that's really annoying. Another solution might be to maybe, uh, I don't know. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this up and I'm going to move all this back as it were, like so. Okay, <clears throat> so I've been talking a bit with um, with uh, Stefan, the um, maintainer, and he kind of knows what's going on here. So I think I'm just going to leave it like this for now. And I'm going to make a PR and ha make him have a look at it and see how it, see what he thinks and see what kind of input he has to offer. He might come up with something that I haven't thought of. Most likely he will. Uh, so we'll do this properly. What I want to have a look at is. Uh, blah, 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 what the end should be pulling or not. Yeah, so I'm going to fix a bit of this text. Uh, there's an edge case. Uh, well, rather, not an edge case that happens all the time. That's not the definition of an edge case. Um, even though this method uh, stops GTI from um, swallowing input events. Mm. 
snap chain input vents from from the editor it seems that one key input event is still captured still captured looks like it happens after approximately two seconds. The, uh, what's it called? Um, max poll duration. The max poll duration used by uh, the event polar. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to add that to the commit message to make a note of it, you might say. And this first commit is actually quite, uh, I won't say good, uh, <laughs> but it's, it's where it pretty much does what I wanted to do. So what I'm going to do is actually just remove some of these comments, uh, which I just added in to have a bit of a structure before starting to um, write the code, uh, like so. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So this is pretty much how I want it, I think. Didn't put any to do's in here, did I? No. So these are some local changes. I'm just going to move those over to the staged area. And what I'm able to do is right click and go fix up, which will create a fix up commit which you can squash in later. So that's done. So the, for the last part, I'm going to make it refresh whenever I return from the editor. But then how to do that? Hmm. <laughs> I don't think I want to set up a, uh, an event. I might make a note of it in the commit message just to um, just to make it clear that I've considered the idea, but I'm not too uh, not a too big too big a fan of it, to be honest. Hmm. Yeah. So somehow inside of main, I need a way to signal this, that it should do a complete redraw of the whole screen. It kind of seems like a, a shortcoming of TUI to not be able to do that. But um, I'm assuming that they haven't considered the case where you launch Vim on top of a TUI, um, TUI application. So TUI is, TUI is the framework used for drawing the visual on the screen. And I don't think, I don't know if they've considered Vim being run inside of the TUI app. And having this kind of case, uh, thing going on. There might be might be a better way to do this, but I don't know it. Hmm.
<laughs> my instant, or rather, the immediate fix that I can think of is just to make a global variable, which can be read in much like the, the should poll atomic use size, but that's a terrible idea. That's, that just leads to uh, so much pain down the road. Down the road. So I, I, I don't really want to do that. Ideally, I could access a variable right here, which would let me uh, request a clearing uh, or a, um, uh, a full redraw of the of the app, but. There isn't a very obvious way to do that at the moment because the terminal that I need right here to make it work is created by this function, which uh, in turn, somewhere down here, right, right here, it creates the back end, the terminal, it uh, sets up the the cursor and it clears. Okay, this one calls clear. Is that before or after? It's after set of terminal. Interesting. Let's see. I kind of like this design where all these different variables are just local variables of the main function where it doesn't actually rely on any state outside of it. But there are a few things that will be easier solved <laughs> by um, having those as external variables. For example, this input variable right here, if I would be able to reassign this at a later point, I could just kill this background thread whenever launching the editor and then spin it back up once we return to Git UI. And that way we wouldn't have this problem. And the same goes for this terminal variable too. If this was available as a, as a, as part of some state, uh, there, I could just have a, create a function that would be able to access that and that will, would solve it. But we don't have that and I'm not, going to change that because I, that's very likely a design choice by the maintainer and I don't want to kind of break that. So I have to find a way to do it inside of the constraints of what we already have. And I'm coming back to this event idea, but I'm not really liking it still, but it seems like the, this is the main way to communicate from other parts of the app to this main loop. And it kind of feels like this might be the only way to do it properly. But to be able to send generic events from anywhere in the app to this um, event queue or yeah, whatever, it's probably gonna have to be some kind of global state or global variable where you pass those events through anyway. So it isn't really optimal still.
This is a, a function that's available in the create scope, but the variables you need to actually make it work are only available inside of this main function. So I can't just call it directly either. So how do I make this properly? I don't actually know the proper way to do this. I'm not really sure how, okay, right, right, so it just generates the cross beam channels, right, okay, good enough. How does it, um, where are the types set? Oh, right, inference, of course. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I see. Hmm. So instead of this select event, let's just have a look. It takes all the kinds of receivers. It will create a new select. It will select over the different receivers. It will get a selected operation. Which Returns the index of the selected operation. Right. So, yeah, and then it maps the. That receives the. completes the receive operation. Uh, yep. And then it maps that thing to whatever. Makes sense. Okay. <clears throat> uh -huh. Okay. Okay, so I think I'm just going to make a global global channel for this, I think. Yeah, I'll just have to do that. <sighs> I'm kind of resigning myself to the fact that I have to do it this way. Not really liking it, but not seeing another way to do it. Hmm. 
yeah, I'll just do it like this for now. And hopefully I will be able to change it later. No, I can't use light here, can I? Light is unexpected, right? Um, Should have maybe no. channel oh, man that's about yeah well it's on point it's uh, on brand for me so <laughs> uh slowly let's, let's make this a do we have these in here receiver i think this is the one uh from crossbeam yep yeah. receiver of basic notification No, that's just to get one. I'm I'm just yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Uh so I think I'm just gonna generate Q events directly here. Like so. Yeah, but this is gonna be oh crap. Um This is me realizing that I haven't really done this in Rust before and I'm Trying to remember what is actually possible here at all. Hmm. How did I do it here? Pop static should pull. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I initialized it at once. That's the difference. Didn't do like a lazy thing. Um, I'm assuming lazy static is not used here yet. No. Right. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to assign this immediately, which is problematic. Um, so I could make this an option and assign it later by doing that. You know what? I'm just going to do that for now and see what the maintainer says. And if he comes up with a better solution to this, I am all ears. Because this is not what I want. Okay, let's just set this to none. And then inside this, I'm thinking... Um, Uh, right about, I don't know, here, we'll just do let, uh, the sender of commands, 
and the receiver of commands is another unbounded, unbounded, like so. And we'll set the commands channel to some, no, 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 uh, to TX commands. But we can't do that. We can assign twice to an immutable which is why we do this. Uh, use of mutable static is unsafe. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, let's do that then. Um, Oh, right, uh, it's not a receiver at all, it's a sender, like so. Yes, and let's just add a comment here. Safety, um, this hasn't The app hasn't started running yet. I'm actually thinking that we should just move this further up. Uh, let's see. Do, do, do. Maybe is one of the first things we do, just to be sure. Right. So we set that like so. And we'll add it to do right here, I think saying that maybe, no, no, no. I, w I was wondering if I should just say, maybe we should use, um, what's it called? Uh, lazy static, but I don't want to suggest that either because I don't really know if that's the solution we want. Uh, let's see, where are you? Cross uh, beam channel, uh, it does not import send, so no, no sender, so let's do that. Um, probably doesn't be on so. like so. And for sender, like it should, that says it sets it to some. Uh, this should now include the RX commands, and we'll jump down to select events. And this will say rx underscore commands, which is a borrowed, oh, borrowed receiver of q event, like so. It also has an, its own thing here, so rx commands, like so. Get the index, and if the index is four. Uh, due to the operation, uh, let's finish up this arts commands, and we're going to map that, and that's going to be easy because we already have the event, like so. So we just do events push and the event itself. Um, so that should be straightforward. Right, and then we need to go update this to actually have one of the events that we want it to have. Interesting, this is actually defined inside of the poll. I would think that that's a strange word, word, place to put it, but sure. Uh, let's add command to this. 
No, not the man. Um, let's just call it full redraw. Redraw, like so. Yes. And then, at long last, inside here, Q event, full redraw. If that happens to be the case, I think I'm just gonna do a quick and dirty. <laughs> oh man, that sounded worse than it should. Uh, terminal resize with terminal dot size and just propagate everything up upwards. So uh, if we can get my fingers working like so. Okay, so now we're able to call that event. Uh, oops, this doesn't work, it says. Uh, yeah, this should be a borrowed one. Oh, come on. There we go. Now, apologies for my poor typing. Um, it's a bit worse than it should be because I've recently changed my keyboard and my keyboard layout. So my fingers are still working um, on old muscle memory. So sometimes my fingers doesn't do what my brain wants, wants them to do. So let's see. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. We get the events, we get it parsed, we can receive it over here. And I think if we head back to commit and we go down here, we do create, we do commands channel. I'm just going to unwrap that. Ooh, that feels exceptionally dirty. No, you know what? I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I, I know it to be just so feels so wrong using unwrap. Ugh. Um, this is set during app setup and and should never be um, mutated again. Yes. Oh, it still feels wrong though. Okay, so let's see what it complains about. Um, oh, what the? What just happened? Use of mutable static is unsafe. Ah, uh, right. We need to put this all in, in a safe block. Right. That is right. Okay. That's. Yeah. You see, that's not a good look uh, for this in general. But let's see. Unwrap dot. Um, uh, <laughs> send. Is that isn't that the one? Yes. I think so. Send the message of T, and we're going to send Q event full redraw. That's going to return a, a result, I think. Yes, with the sender, we're just going to propagate that up. And we are going to rely on the fact that we don't change it again. There's so many things I don't like about this solution, but we'll put this in here for now. And we'll see how that does. Okay, so there are some errors. <laughs> um, do, 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 forbid unsafe. Yeah, okay, there we go. So that breaks that immediately. Uh, I think that's set up over here. Uh, let's see. Uh, 
forbid unsafe code. Yeah, so we're gonna temporarily comment that out. <laughs> oh man, this is so bad. Uh, let's see. Move occurs because option which is not implement the copy trait right kind of move out of static item yeah that makes sense uh, we can do this as um, as ref That should work, right? Because this only needs a yeah reference. Yeah, that should work. Let's see how that does. I think it's building here somewhere. Okay, that's promising. Uh, let's jump not over there, but to the terminal. Let's jump into Vim. We'll head back out of Vim. Vim. <laughs> and it works. Yes. Ah, oh, wow. That's a great success. Um, apart from the fact that it uses a lot of solutions that I'm really not happy about. <laughs> I think we actually. Okay, so this command thing works. Or the, ch the command channel works. But I'm not really too happy about it. But it's a draft. It gets it working, which is fantastic. Um, as a proof of concept, I could enter my commit message here and see if that works. So let's see. Um, Uh, what should we call this? Um, what have we called? How did we enter these previous ones? Stop pulling for events when an external is okay. Yeah. So, for example, um, redraw UI when returning from external editor uh, forces the forces to a uh, let's do to redraw the whole app when returning from the external editor. This, this is achieved, achieved by uh, creating a um, global mm, static channel for sending uh, let's call them um, app commands. I think I'm just going to leave it there. And I'll... Moment of truth. <laughs> and it works. Mostly. <laughs> it enters all that as a, as a header. It shouldn't do that. <laughs> it doesn't preserve the line endings properly. Or rather, the new lines properly. Okay, yeah, yeah. That's... Um... 
that's interesting. I thought it would when I did what I did. Uh, no, because it right there, there should be a new line there. I think it might be something to do with uh, the way the message is committed. Uh, let's see. So if we go down a bit, commit message, yes. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Hooks, commit message, repo path. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Pass in the message. If it's not okay. Uh, sync commits. Yeah, I think there might be something in here that doesn't preserve it as it should. I, I, I think I'm guessing that it it might be that the uh, what's it called this library Git you are Git two. Uh, it might be that it um, wants a separate input for like the, the, the title or header of the, the commit message and the body of the message. So yeah, that's a thing that needs to be fixed too. Um, let's see, I'm just gonna write that down in my book. I have a physical book that I'm writing in so you won't be able to see anything. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so here we're gonna enter a note on uh, new lines in commit messages are not preserved. So I know that um, this makes uh, all the text part of the title. There we go. So I've got that jotted down in my notebook. I am just going to go here and amend this and insert a, oh, <laughs> insert a new line right here. Oh, that's the wrong button. Uh, let's see. Oh, that's too far. Uh, let's see. Here we go. What? Oh, crap. Uh, let's, uh, let's do uh, this, I think. Amend, yeah. If we use the mouse. All right, here we go. <laughs> Multiple lines inside of the, yeah, 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 okay. Uh, let's cut this and paste that in here. There we go. I even spelled the cheese wrong. There we go. In an ideal world, I would rebase a master here, but I tried building master and it failed. So now I'm scared of... Uh... Okay, let's just... Um... going to rebase and make that fix up merge in like it should yeah, there we go now let's just jump over here and quit this uh, right this didn't work last time either I, I haven't found out how to properly fix that but it seems like if I exit git UI it doesn't I don't, can't manage to exit uh, watch exec um, so what I've been Let's see. 
Uh, no. It's probably what she's directly I have to look for. There we go. So kill 9781. There we go. Let's just clear that. And if I now head over to master and try to run that. Add feature const defend to the create attributes to enable. This error or, or originates in a macro. Da, ba, 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 ba. Macro backtrace for more info. So it's a bit weird because it's a numbered release version, which I find weird. Uh, this is in health. When did that last change? Let's see. Uh, do source components help view show file history mm. ah right here commit details in log so it changes this to a const And apparently, it seems to be, uh, I'm assuming that he's running on nightly or something. But heap allocations in consts. I didn't think that was allowed in any case. Or is it now, maybe? I haven't really been keeping up to date with uh, the news developments in consts, to be honest. I am on the newest version of the of the stable release, I know. So it might be that he's running on a nightly build, which have heap allocations allowed for const functions, maybe? I don't know. I'll just keep it back here, I think. And, hmm. Yeah, I'll just keep it like this and I'll just push my branch uh, like uh, to, 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 to origin, yes. Okay, so I'll uh, <clears throat> I'll basically create a PR for uh, for this um, for this feature, and I'll have Stefan give some feedback. The maintainer give some feedback on what he thinks. And I'm, I'm not going to do the PR on the stream because I'm going to have to do a lot of explaining of my thinking behind every cho choice that I've made and uh, possible solutions to what I've done. And yeah, so there are some, some thoughts there that need to be elaborated on that's just me sitting and typing on this, uh, typing on my computer and that's not interesting to watch. <laughs> which which is basically what live uh, code live streaming is <laughs> oh man i just yeah okay that's that's um that's almost a cell phone uh <laughs> i'm sorry uh, man i didn't think that sentence through uh okay well anyways uh i'm gonna i'm gonna end it there i'm gonna make a pr for the um, changes that I've made and uh, have a talk with, or rather a, a chat, I guess, with the maintainer and see what he thinks um, would be the best way to um, approach this. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that's it for tonight, I think. Um, I hope to see you um, some other time. Uh, have a good one.